Welcome back to Easy Moto Tim. About a year ago, I created two videos on simple routing techniques in Garmin Basecamp. It's time to update those videos to help you get comfortable using Basecamp. A friend of mine watched the earlier videos and discovered he didn't have all the toolbars turned on, which made following the instructions rather difficult. He suggested I create a new video on setting up Basecamp to get it ready to use. That's what I'll cover in this video. We'll turn on the toolbars, set some options, and create a folder and list. For these videos, I'm going to assume you have a Garmin GPS and have installed Garmin Express, Basecamp, and the maps. You should have installed the maps on your GPS and on your computer. Now these videos are made using the Windows version of Basecamp. The Mac version has a very different interface. Now let's go to the computer screen. Here we are in Garmin Basecamp. I'm running it on a Windows 10 laptop. Let's take an overview of the main screen. In the center here, the main portion of the screen is a map. At the top, we have a menu, series of menu system. Below it, toolbars. with the various tools that you'll use to uh, create and manipulate your route. Over on the left, where it says library, is where the data is stored. Basecamp uses a folder and list system to organize the data. You create folders, and within the folders, you create lists. And then in the lists are where you put your routes and waypoints. In the area below library, the devices will show up. If you have your GPS plugged in, it will be in this area here. Down below where it says My Collection, in this area, the items in a list are displayed. At the bottom of that is a search bar where you can search for items in the database within the lists and folders. To the right is a funnel where you can filter the data that's shown in the list. You can see um, just waypoints or routes, various things. There. At the top is a gear and that brings up a menu so you can sort the items in the list different ways. In the upper right hand corner is another search bar. That's where you search for points of interest, such as hotels and gas stations. And you can also enter an address in that search bar. I want you to notice on the toolbar, the hand, which is the pan tool, is active. I can zoom in on the maps by rolling the mouse wheel and I can drag the map by left clicking and dragging. Now up in the upper left here of the map is an arrow that points north. And notice when I hover over it, it brings up a pan and zoom control. These triangles you click those to move east and west, north and south, and you can click on the zoom tool or arrow, or you can do plus or minus to zoom in or zoom out. Now the outer wheel of this uh, pan tool allows you to rotate the map and you can rotate it in various ways. Now <clears throat> this arrow is between north and east so if I click that arrow I'm moving northeast. 
and I can zoom out. Now you can roll that wheel back to try to get it on north, or you can go up to view a line north up in the menus, and that'll get it exactly north. Let's set up the toolbars to make sure the important ones are visible. To do that, we go to View on the menu, Toolbars, and I'm going to click Detail Level. You can turn on or off one toolbar at a time. Another way to turn the toolbars on is to go up to the bar, right click, and then select the toolbar you want to turn on. I'm going to turn on map products. Now let's look at the tools on these toolbars. The first is the map product and it Basecamp installs with the global map and I've installed other maps when I've updated my GPS. The detail level here is set to medium. If you set that to highest, you'll see the map is covered with icons which are points of interest. So unless you're zoomed in pretty far, it's best to leave it at medium or high. These next icons that are grayed out are active when you have a route on the map. The first is the Insert tool, the Move Point, Erase, Divide, Cut, Copy, Paste, Delete, Undo, and Redo. This icon with the down arrow, that's to send a route and waypoints to your GPS. With the up arrow, that's to receive routes or waypoints from your GPS. Now the hand we talked about before, that's for panning. There's a zoom icon, measurement, new waypoint, new route, new track, activity profile. We'll talk more about activity profiles in a bit. To view the 2D map, or the 3D map, or both maps. This is for the overview map. I'll click that one. And that opens up this window. And you can drag the map around by dragging in that window and rolling your mouse in and out. You can zoom. This is swap map and data views allows you to put the map over on the left and then if you have lots of data you can work with your data. The next step is to set up the options in the program. To do that we'll go up to edit and options which brings up a window with five buttons on the left and an area on the right to set parameters. The first one is measurement, and here under measurement system is where you pick whether you want statute miles or metric system uh, kilometers. That's about the only thing you need to set on this page. Next we go to display, and there are a couple things I like to change. I like to set the symbol size up to large so that they're easy to identify when you're zoomed in. The other important thing to change is the map font. You scroll down to map font and then click the select button. I like to set it at 12 points. The reason you do this is that when you're zoomed in on a road, the name of the road is very difficult to read. By increasing the font size, it makes the road names easier to read. 
Next, we go to the Activity Profile button. Activity profiles are different types of routing based on what you're doing. Here, I'll click the down arrow and you see the names of various types of activities that you might use Basecamp for. We're interested in mo motorcycling. Now, each activity has its own set of parameters. So you can set parameters for walking that are different from the parameters for motorcycling. One of the things I like to do is change how many points of interest are shown on the map. Click the plus sign beside points and I like to turn off most of these. Um, I'll leave on cities, leave on food and drink, and leave on fuel, and turn off uh, these other ones, leave lodging on, other recreation, shopping, transportation. That way the map won't be so cluttered with icons when you zoom in, and they, it won't show you things you're not really interested in. I'll close that. Now there's two tabs here on the activity profile page. We just set the map display features on the general tab, and then here is a routing tab. Here you can set whatever you like on faster time, shorter distance, or curvy roads for the program to use. Roads to avoid. Now, I don't like, I don't mind interstates, so I'm going to uncheck interstates and major highways so that it will use those roads when it's routing. Uh, I generally don't go on unpaved roads, so I'll have that one checked. These are other things to avoid. Um, I'm going to uncheck carpool lanes. We don't want to avoid those because generally motorcycles can go on HOV lanes. You can then check, leave on uh, the other ones. Uh, roundabouts is fine. That does it for the routing tab. On the device transfer tab, there's nothing you need to change there. And on the general tab, I like to make sure that use alt when dragging to move or insert data is checked. I want that I want to be able to use that feature. If you're if you speak a different language up at the top you can select the language that you would like to have uh, use in the program. We'll click OK and that's that's it for setting up the options. The last thing we'll do is to create a folder and a list. So I click on my collection and then I'm going to right click new list folder and type in sample routes. That's the name of the folder. And then I'm going to right click on that folder and create a new list and call it sample route one. There's one more thing I would like to show you and that's what happens if you leave the global map active. The global map is really a placeholder. I'm going to zoom in and while it has roads and cities and points of interest, you really can't do routing on it. Now I'm going to make a simple route and show you what happens when the global map is active. I'm going to click create new route. I'm not going to do starting and ending and I'm going to click at uh, 
different points on the map and you see and I'm going to go back to the hand so you see that the route is straight lines it doesn't follow the roads that's because you can't do routing on the global map what you need to do is to go to the drop down and select one of your GPS maps and you can do that in the drop down or you can go to maps in the menu and select one of your GPS maps I'm going to open up that route list and recalculate close that and so now you see that the the route follows the roads that's a little something that might find you might find baffling if you have it on global maps and if you haven't turned on the map product toolbar or haven't discovered the maps menu that wraps up this video on the general setup of Basecamp. In the next video, we'll revisit creating routes. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up as it really helps us by letting YouTube know that others might like to see this video. You can support the channel by clicking on the Amazon product links in the description. I'll see you in the next video.